Hey everybody, Dr. Duncan here. We're going to talk about Alabama's biodiversity. To begin, let's talk about the term biodiversity itself. This is a combination of the phrase biological diversity. And this term can refer to several levels of biological organization. Um, on the level that you hear this term used most frequently, it's referring to the diversity of species that you have in an area. Um, so you might, for example, say that one species has more biodiversity than another, and in that case you would be referring to um, that one area has more species than another. But we also use the term to refer to the diversity of ecosystems as well as uh, living communities within those ecosystems, or um, below the species level, we might be referring to the diversity of populations, subpopulations of a species, or even the genetic diversity within populations. So it's a very versatile term, but again, when it's used most frequently, it's referring to species diversity. Now, where is the world's species diversity or biological diversity found? Um, as you know from your textbook readings, um, there are places on the planet where we have a lot of biological diversity. You might think of the tropical rainforests of the world, or you might think of uh, the coral reefs of the world. Yes, these ecosystems do have exceptionally high levels of biodiversity, but what if I were to tell you that you don't have to go very far to find some of the most species diverse ecosystems on the planet, because they're right here in Alabama. The table you see on the right is from a study that came out in the year 2002 that looked at um, the diversity of species across the 50 U.S. states. And uh, this isn't for all biodiversity because we don't have a catalog of all the species that are found everywhere, but for those groups of organisms that are well studied in enough of the states to do the comparison, when you put all those data together, as it turns out, Alabama ranks number five in, among U.S. states for total species diversity. <clears throat> we rank uh, behind California, Texas, Arizona, and New Mexico. But when you just consider states that are in the eastern U.S., Alabama ranks number one. So Alabama is a hotspot for biodiversity here in the U.S. But um, it's also a global hotspot for several different groups of organisms. Let's take a look at these groups that Alabama is most famous for in terms of its biological diversity. Number one would be uh, freshwater fishes. Uh, the state has more freshwater fishes than any other state in the U.S. Everything from colorful, colorful darters like you see on the left to blind cave fish that are found deep below ground to strange species such as sturgeon uh, that you see at the bottom. We are also the number one state for mussel biodiversity. Um, and if you look at the global scale, we are the global hotspot for mussel biodiversity. There are more mussels in just the Cahaba River, which is found right here in the Birmingham area. There are more mussels in the Cahaba than in all of Europe combined. We're also the number one state for crawfish, or if you want to, you can call them crayfish or crawdads or mud bugs. We're not only the number one state, but we are the global hotspot for crayfish diversity. We are also the number one state and the global hotspot for freshwater snail diversity. We're also the number one state for damselfly species diversity. Damselflies are um, predatory insects uh, that their larvae uh, grow uh, in wetlands and rivers, and, um, and the adults tend to hang out uh, around wet wetlands and rivers. We're the number one state and global hotspot, yet again, for carnivorous plant diversity. And as you might anticipate, I'm about to say that we're the number one state for freshwater turtle diversity and the global hotspot for turtle diversity on the planet. In fact, the just the Mobile Tensaw River Delta, which is in lower Alabama, has the highest turtle diversity on the entire planet. We are also the number one state for frog and toad diversity uh, when, you com when you combine those groups. And when you go underground into our cavern systems and explore the species that are found there, many of which are uh, aquatic species like you see here, you find that uh, the area of northeastern Alabama 
is part of the third most biodiverse cave region in the temperate world. So that means outside of the tropics. And considering that uh, only about 10% of the caverns of the region have been explored by biologists, um, our ranking will probably be at the top amongst temperate cave zones on the planet. So all this leads to the question, why is there so much biodiversity in Alabama? There are four answers to this question, and I'll review them uh, here. Um, and I'll say that there's a lot more complexity to each of these answers. Um, I'm just going to hit some of the highlights. To begin with, we have a very uh, a good climate that's conducive for uh, many species to grow. We have very mild to uh, warm temperatures um, in the summer times or temperatures of, of approach tropical conditions. We also have abundant rainfall and the combination of the warm temperatures and abundant rainfall make it really easy for many species to to survive and to thrive. Uh, the uh, long We have a long growing season which allows uh, plants to do a considerable amount of growth during the warm months and that leads to an overall high level of primary productivity, which is a measure of the total amount of photosynthesis that happens in an ecosystem. So climate is uh, one of the major reasons for why we've got so many species in the state. It explains how we can sustain those species, but it doesn't explain why we have those species in the first place. So that leads to our second reason for why we have so many species in the state, and it's our evolutionary history. We have a very long and rich evolutionary history that has facilitated the evolution of many species in the southeast, and Alabama in particular. And as you might have noticed um, from the introduction, uh, most of the groups for which Alabama is uh, ranks very highly in terms of its species diversity are freshwater species. They're either found in our rivers or streams or associated wetlands. So if that's the case, if we've had so many freshwater species arise and we've got all these species in the state of Alabama, how did they arise? What sort of processes uh, led, led to that? So let's explore that. Um, it leads to our third reason for why we've got so many species in the state, and that is that we have a very diverse geology. Now here I have to unpack a little bit of uh, geology for you, and then we'll tie that into uh, species evolution um, in, in just a few moments. Let's begin with taking a look at the map on the, at the right. That is the geologic map of Alabama. It's the simplified version, despite how complex it might look. Each of those colors represents a different type of rock or sediment that is exposed at the surface of the state. Different types of sediments um, and rocks at the surface of the state are going to yield different topographies. Topography is the shape of the landscape. So, so we have some areas in the state that are flat, others that have hills, others that are very mountainous. And we have some re and we have different flavors of each. We've got different types of hilly regions and different types of mountainous regions. In addition to the different shapes of the landscape, we also have different types of soils that are derived from the weathering of rocks. Some soils are very acidic, other soils are very alkaline, and different types of soils support different types of plants and animals, and as is also true of the variation in the topography. So the more geologic diversity that you have in a, in a region, including you know, states, and this of course is Alabama, um, the more diverse geology that you have, um, the more opportunities you're going to have for different ecosystems and different species in those ecosystems. Now let's, uh, let's understand a little bit more about how all this uh, comes together. Uh, most, like I said before, most of Alabama is comprised of sedimentary rock or, or old sediments that are at the surface. Sedimentary rock is one of three types of rocks. Um, that we find on the planet. Um, there, it's formed when there's erosion that transports materials such as sand and silt and sometimes gravel <clears throat> off of the mainland and into uh, adjacent bodies of water, uh, such as oceans or sometimes large lakes. Those sediments accumulate on the seafloor and over long periods of time they, they become compacted under the weight of new sediments and also under the weight of all that water. 
And um, also, in addition to the compaction, you get cementation of the rocks. So the physical chemistry of the water at such depths and under such pressure changes and causes uh, silica to come out of solution and to form a cement that cements the particles together. So you go from a deposit of sand to getting sandstone or a deposit of silt to getting siltstone or mudstone. And essentially that's how different sedimentary rocks are formed. I want you to also notice that the new rock layers that form in these aquatic environments are laid down in a horizontal pattern, uh, kind of like you might see in a layer cake. That's important and we'll come back to that in just a minute. Now to understand um, how Alabama has such geologic diversity, we have to go back in our geologic history of the state and this region of the world. This is a, a map representing what things looked like about 300 million years ago in the early Permian. What you're seeing is the collision of three large continental plates. As you may already know, the Earth's crust is divided into plates that move around very slowly and sometimes they collide. Continental plates are those plates that have a, a significant amount of, of land that's exposed on them. And when continental plates uh, collide, they form mountains. And this, of course, this collision that happened and actually began over 300 million years ago led to the formation of the Appalachian Mountains that are still in existence today. So when the Appalachian Mountains formed, um, mountain formation is a very messy process. It takes a lot of a rock material and thrusts it up at different angles and, and so forth. So is it, remember that layer cake that you get when sedimentary rocks are formed? That was essentially um, turned up on end and thrust up towards the surface. And so consequently, as you see in the cartoon to the right, we wind up having today many different rock layers of sedimentary rock exposed at the surface. Some are very old, some are somewhat newer. But the important thing here is that we have all these different types of rocks at the surface. So let's tie that into our ecological diversity. So the Southern Appalachians, because we have them in the state, we wind up having a lot of different landscapes. Landscapes where there are different types of rocks at the surface that, um, and also landscapes that vary from being very mountainous to um, being essentially flat. And this creates opportunities for many different types of ecosystems. Within these different landscapes, you have different types of rocks that are exposed at the surface. Different rocks will weather and become different types of soils. Different types of soils support different species of plants. And of course, different species of plants support different species of animals. So all of this to illustrate and explain why one of the main reasons why Alabama has so many species in it is because there's a tremendous amount of geologic diversity in the state. And that leads to a lot of topographic diversity and soil diversity, which supports many different types of ecosystems. Now to get a feel for the degree to which this has influenced the um, diversity of species we have in the state, take a look at these next two maps. This is, these are the geologic maps for both Mississippi on the left and Alabama on the right. And if you look at the total number of species that each state has, Alabama ranks number five in the U.S. for species richness, as we talked about, but Mississippi ranks number 17. Now, you might not have expected this um, because the two states are very similar in shape. They both have access to um, the same amount of uh, northern latitudes, and they also have access to the same degree of southern latitudes and access to the Gulf of Mexico. But if you look at the geology of the states as depicted in these maps, you see that Alabama has much more geologic diversity. Um, you see it shares with Mississippi most of the same types of um, soil formations and rock formations that Mississippi has but Alabama also has the beginnings of the Appalachian Mountains. That's all those squiggly uh, purple, blue, and pink uh, rock layers that you see coming down from the top right. 
So it's this geologic diversity that is the main reason for why Alabama can, can sustain so many species and also for why Alabama had so many species evolve in it. So let's, let's now talk about the evolution of aquatic species in the state and, and see how that's tied to the geologic diversity. The state, because of the Appalachian Mountains, is divided into multiple large watersheds. Perhaps the most important Appalachian influence on Alabama's species diversity has been with its freshwater fauna, as we talked about earlier. When the Appalachians fractured the southeastern landscape into multiple watersheds, they created many of the opportunities for the evolution of aquatic species. Fish, snails, mussels, and crayfish are very easily isolated in the shallow streams and the headwaters of major rivers. With isolation and sufficient, and sufficient genetic divergence, more freshwater species have arisen here than in any other place in the temperate world. Another way to think about this is that by fracturing the state into these distinct watersheds, it has facilitated the allopatric speciation of many freshwater species. All right, so so far we've got three major reasons for why Alabama has so many species. The diverse uh, geology sustains many different ecosystems and therefore species. The mild, wet climate also sustains lots of species. And our, our rich evolutionary and geologic history has allowed for the evolution of many species, especially aquatic species. There's one more reason that has little to do with biology and ecology for why the state has so many species, but must be acknowledged, and that is our political history. This is a map of the Mississippi Territory, Mississippi Territory in 1814, just before uh, the states of Mississippi and Alabama were established. And at that time, one of the considerations that the federal government considered was dividing the territory across the midline so that there'd be a north state and a south state made out of this territory. Uh, I think we would all agree, fortunately, that, they, um, that it was fortunate that we divided the two states up and down the middle so that both had some coastal access. And because of that decision, um, Alabama enjoys <clears throat> excuse me, access to the Gulf of Mexico and um, the very warm subtropical climates that you find in lower Alabama, all the way up to the Tennessee River and its tremendous diversity of aquatic species that you have up in the Tennessee River. And of course, Alabama has access to the Appalachian Mountains. So this is yet another reason for why we've got so many species in the state. So there you have it. Alabama is a superstar for biodiversity. You don't have to go far um, to, uh, to get a taste of this. Just find your nearest creek or stream and you'll see some pretty dazzling species that are, in most cases, not found anywhere else in the world.